Say to the people that are watching us live on the internet, good morning. And as always, it is good to stand before you on the Lord's Sabbath day. We're going to get right to this lesson, sisters and brothers. You know, uh, uh, this is called, this title, The Church and Its Teaching. The Church and Its Teaching. And what inspired this lesson is that other church. The one that originated in Rome instead of in Judea. And it's not hard to tell the difference in the teachings in the two churches. All you need to do is read the Bible, sisters and brothers. And a lot of things would be cleared up if only you read the Bible. You know, we said in the old days, you know, when Pentecost, the church took over. That is, that is what's being taught among the people that think that they are Christians. But let's go at the, in Pentecost and look at it and see who it is that was there and who took over what. Let's go into Acts, the second chapter. Acts, chapter 2. See, that's why, sisters and brothers, the Lord, a lot of people is going to go to the lake of fire. Because I'm convinced that if I can turn, open this book up and read it and understand enough to know that I need to know some more, anybody else can. T can. People try and blow my head up some, boy, you belonged and did something special. Yeah, he gave me some good eyesight so I can read. That's what he did special with me. And he did the same thing with you. And if you don't have the good eyesight, then he let you be smart enough to create glasses so you still can read. And I say it all the time. If I can understand it, I don't see why nobody else can understand it, can't understand it. And you have people that go to college, then go to school of theology, and still can't understand this Bible. There's something wrong. Especially among Israel, because the Lord gave us the mind to understand this. He don't, when it, see, the Lord have a protocol. And everything that, we, that he want man to do, he has somebody that is a part of Israel that understands it. In every generation, this is what people have to understand. But the problem is, nobody want to listen to the captive. But in our generation, it's no different from no other generation. You read this book, if you really pray for understanding, and especially if you're the stock of Israel, it just, it just rolls for you. It's all that simple. Now, we're going to start this in Acts, the second chapter, because this is where the church is supposed to be, have taken over. You know, the church. But you ain't got but one church, sisters and brothers. Look around at yourself. Acts 2 and 1, go ahead. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, uh -huh. they were all with one accord in one place. Go ahead. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, uh -huh. and it filled all the house where they were sitting. So there was all at one accord. This is the feast of weeks, sisters and brothers. Mm -hmm. Gentiles and no other nationalists kept this because they said, well, this is the Jews' feast. And don't you know if you listen at they saying the same thing nowadays? Well, that's the Jews' feet. Then all of a sudden, there's a big rushing wind come into the room. And let's see what happened. Go ahead and read. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues, uh -huh. like as of a fire, and it set upon each of them. Go ahead. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now, most people think that this is some kind of bodily form come in and went into all these people's sisters and brothers that rushing was nothing but a flock of angels. Well, on the day of Pentecost, we'll show you that. Because the Lord communicates through his angels. There is not but two type beings in the creation. Spirit and soul. Spirit, God, Jesus, and all the angels. And soul, man, and beast. There is no spirit that goes inside of you. The only word, the spirit that goes inside of you is the word of God. So these flock of angels come in on the day of Pentecost. And they're... Uh, had fiery tongues sitting by each one of them. You see it all the time when you watch the UN. In the old days, they used to have people sitting close to them. 
Nowadays, they just have something in their ear. Whoever is addressing the UN, they're doing it in their language. But then each nation have an interpreter interpreting what he's saying to their leader. Mm -hmm. Only thing the Lord did here is uh, who is going to interpret his word? Only the angels. That's it. So they sit by each one of them, and Peter them spoke as they was moved by the, the Holy Ghost. Why I know it's Peter them? Because they, we gonna, they, a statement going to be made later. Go ahead and read. Five. And they were dwelling at Jerusalem, Jews, devout men, out of every nation under heaven. Now look what it said. Out of every nation under heaven, Jews, devout men. And we're going to show you where all these guys was there on their Pentecost which is the Feast of Weeks. Go ahead and read. Now, when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded uh -huh. because that every man heard them speak in his own language. Every man heard them speak in his own language. One but one person speaking system down there at a time. It wasn't a whole bunch of people just talking. No, look what he said. Go ahead and read. And they were all amazed and marveled, uh -huh. saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? You notice it didn't say, it didn't say are not all these which speak Jews, did it? No. Because everybody knows was an Israelite. That's right. But are, are not all these that speak out of the coast of Galileans? So Peter them was Galileans. Mm -hmm. Peter them was speaking in their own language. And these guys had come in from all over the world. And what did they say? Go ahead and read. And how hear we every man in our own tongue when we were born? Ain't that something? People have made tongue some kind of spiritual and mean language, sisters and brothers. How is it that we hear them? Are not all these guys speak like Galileans? Why then do we hear them speak in our own language wherein we was born? I speak English. I don't speak French. I don't speak Germany. I don't speak Russian. I don't speak Italian, but we have Israelites in every nation. And we all have some knowledge. We all converge in one place. I get up and I address the whole house in English, but you got them angels, them fiery tongues, interpreting to everybody. Mm -hmm. See, what's happening, sisters and brothers, when you go to church, people have removed all reason out of the word of God. Have to be some spookery. God is the God of reason, sisters and brothers. Yes, and it's about time for him to stop making a joke out of his word. That's right. It's how we then speak, and I hear them speak in our own language. Go ahead and read. Wherein we were born. Go ahead and read. Well, read on through it. Go ahead and read. Nine. Parthians and Medes and Elamites and the dwellers in Mesopotamia uh -huh. and in Judea and Cappadocia and Pontus and Asia. Go ahead. Pergia and Pamphylia and Egypt. And in parts of Libya, about Cyrene, and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes. Now, see, where people wrote me, I read, I wanted to read, they said, Jews and proselytes, that mean that uh, Jews, look, all of them was Israelites. Mm -hmm. Proselyte only means somebody that's been converted, but they were still Israelites. That's why they was there. Otherwise, they wouldn't have been there. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. 11. Cretes and Arabians. We do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful works of God. Ain't that something? Peter and the apostles was doing the speaking, sisters and brothers. But everybody there heard them speaking in their own language. When you look among men, you look at the United Nations, you see that makes sense. But when it comes to the Bible, thee don't mean thee no more. It have to mean something else. So you got to read between the lines. I keep saying, every time I read between the lines, I saw the same thing. Empty space. Go ahead and read. What verse? Twelve. Uh -huh. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, What meaneth this? Uh -huh. Others mocking said, These men are full of new wine. Uh -huh. But Peter standing up with them. Ain't that something? He said, These men are, uh, uh, are full of new wine. That's pretty drunk, ain't it? You get so drunk, you can speak about two, three hundred languages at one time. <laughs> Can't get that drunk. And this is the thing, sister and brother, that we have to understand. Go ahead and read. 14. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, uh -huh. Ye men of Judea and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, Go ahead. be this known unto you and hearken to my words. Now, 
He said, you men of Judea and they of Jerusalem. He was talking strictly Israelite. We ain't dealing with all with, with what we're saying. We're dealing with who was there. Skip down and read verse 22. Verse 22. Let's look how Peter addressed him again. Go ahead and read. Ye men of Israel. Ye men of Israel. Go ahead. These words. Uh-huh. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, uh-huh. which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. So he is addressing Israel, sister and brother, because that was all that was there on the day of Pentecost. Yeah. If a non-Israelite had stumbled up in there on the day of Pentecost, he'd have got stoned to death. Because Israel had not, they didn't understand at that time when Jesus came and restarted his people that they was the priest of all of the sons of Adam. Nobody heard the Lord when he said that. So now this is the day of Pentecost. Why was all these people here on day of Pentecost? Keep your finger in Acts. But let's go into Deuteronomy the 16th chapter. We're coming back to Acts. Deuteronomy the 16th chapter. And we're going to read one verse. Verse 6. Deuteronomy 16. I mean, it's a verse 16, rather. Deuteronomy 16 and verse 16. That's why I listen to people all the time. Well, you know, on the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Ghost was poured out upon the people, the church took a holy like what? <laughs> people don't understand, sisters and brothers. They just don't understand. And when you put it on the table the way it is, don't nobody want to listen to it because they figure that you have diminished the word of God. Mm -hmm. But when you read the book, it makes sense. Verse 16, read it. Three times in a year. Three times in a year? Shall all the males appear before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose. He said three times. This is a commandment that all the males appear before the Lord is thy God which he shall choose. Go ahead and read. In the Feast of Unleavened Bread. That's the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Come out to Passover. Go ahead and read. And in the Feast of Weeks. Feast of Weeks. That's Pentecost. That's why the Lord said, Number you seven Sabbath two and uh, unto uh, the day after the Sabbath, which is the first day. Seven times seven is 49. One more day, 50. That's what Pentecost merely means, 50. There ain't nothing holy about it. I know some guys that would call a business that's called the Pentecost Brothers. <laughs> the Feast of Weeks, go ahead and read. And in the Feast of Tabernacles. Uh-huh. And they shall not appear before the Lord empty. Is it now this one time when you come, you better bring something with you. So all of those guys was there because it was a commandment for them to be there for these three feasts. Unleavened bread, Feast of Weeks, which is Pentecost, and the Feast of Tabernacle, which is in gathering. So they was keeping the law, sisters and brothers. But this law was never given to the Gentile. Because Israel never took it to them. Except for the mixed multitude, the multitude that was among them. They knew it, but they didn't practice it. So on the day of Pentecost, was nobody there but Israelites. That's it. Now let's go back to Acts. This time the sixth chapter. Because when the church started to grow, sisters and brothers, brothers started to neglect them little bitty, you know, little bitty meaningless job we already had to don't pay no money. People thought we just started waiting tables when we got to America. We've been waiting tables. From Babylon to now. That's what happens when you disobey your God. That's right. Acts 6 and 1. Go ahead. And in those days when the number of the disciples were multiplied, uh -huh. there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews uh -huh. because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. Ain't that something? They started to complain. All these servants, all these, <laughs> these uh, the meaningful, meaningless servants, you know, cleaning, uh, uh, washing tables, uh, washing rooms and doing all this little bit of work. These guys were running to God. They didn't have time to wait no tables no more. They had no more time to go out and dig the Mrs. God up for them. They was about the word of God. So they started to complain about this. What did Peter and them do about it? Go ahead and read. Then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said, uh -huh. It is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Ain't that something? <laughs> you know, we, we got to... 
We ain't going to stop serving God just to serve tables. Go ahead and read. Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. Uh huh. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. He's now find somebody to put over this business. You understand that, you know, it's, get you a couple of straw balls or somebody. And see if you can regulate this thing. Go ahead and read. And the saying pleased the whole multitude. And they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Ghost, and Philip, and Prochorus, and Nicanor, and Timon, and Parmenas, and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch. Now, we're going to see if these guys are there just dealing with them tables. No, no. They, they handled that business, but they was about the business of God. Yeah. We're going to pursue this one. We're going to pursue Stephen. Skip down to verse 7. Verse 7, and go ahead. And the word of God increased, and the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly. Uh -huh. And a great company of the priests were obedient to the faith. Go ahead. And Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. Now, sisters and brothers, this is what I want to point out now. All of this that we're reading about is being executed and carried out by Israelites. That's right. And Israelites only. This is what people don't understand. There ain't nobody here but Israelites. Go ahead and read. Then there arose certain of the synagogue, which is called the synagogue of the Libertines, uh -huh. and Cyrenians and Alexandrians, and of them of Cilicia and of Asia, disputing with Stephen. We always had a bunch of different groups among Israel. Yes. And it ain't changed now. <laughs> and we are in dispute with all of them because we're the ones that call on the name of Jesus. That's right. Oh, y'all follow them old Christians. Hey, we were the original Christians. We ain't following nobody. No. If they're doing wrong, they're on their own. If they're doing right, they follow us. That's right. That's right. It's all that simple. Simple as that, brother. I'm looking at some things, some guy dealing with Kemet trying to promote Egypt. You understand? Go say, well, you know, the, uh, 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 the Catholic Church is set up on the priesthood is set up. After the Egyptian, the Kemet. I said, now he didn't heard me saying that they set up after Israel. That's the Levitical priesthood you're looking at in Rome. They didn't have nothing to do with Egypt. Egypt worshiped vultures, jackals, eagles, rabbits. In fact, they had so many gods they didn't know. Now you got this brother trying to jump, follow him. And you even have some people in there talking about Kemet. You look, I'm going to tell you something, sisters and brothers. They have one uh, God. And when people start saying, well, you know, you had the laws among certain people, you got to remember one thing. Everyone, Ham, Shem, and Japheth was Noah's son. Right. They served one God, and they had one set of laws. Right. It's not that they didn't, they, that they, uh, uh, didn't have the law, it's that they got away from the law. That's what they did. The people don't understand. I ain't going to have three sons and I'm going to teach one the truth and, and the other one you have to go on your own. Teach the whole household. Mm -hmm. So when you run into some law, that's why Egyptian was upset with Abraham. So look here, man. What if somebody laid with your wife? You got us all in trouble. You know why? Because he knew about thou should not commit adultery. You know why? It's because he was the son of Noah too. Which come out of hand. So now, Stephen got to uh, uh, dispute with all these different groups. They all pile up on you. I know how that feel because we got these other Israelite group piles up on us too. This is all Israel thing here. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. Ten. And they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake. And, uh, and, and this is, in other words, he had too much knowledge for him. They couldn't deal with it. Go ahead and read. Then they suborned men which said, We have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and against God. Those are uh, uh, low lowlifes. You understand what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Come in lying on the man. Go ahead. And they stirred up the people and the elders and the scribes and came upon him and caught him and brought him to the council. Uh -huh. And set up false witnesses which said, this man ceaseth not to speak blasphemous words against this holy place and the law. All right, they said the same thing with us. You understand? Ain't nothing changed. No. They're going to bring in and they're going to drop Zeus on the table. 
So they took him before the elders. I thank God we ain't got none over here. <laughs> now let's go into Acts the seventh chapter and see what happened when they went before the elders. Go ahead. Seven and one. Seven and one. Go ahead. Then said the high priest, are these things so? Are these things so? They knew these guys were lying. But go ahead. But and this Stephen showed, this, showed these people, I got some knowledge. What did he say? Go ahead. And he said, men, brethren, and fathers, hearken. The God of glory appeared unto our father Abraham when he was in Mesopotamia. Uh -huh. Because he dwelt in Sharan. Uh -huh. And said unto him, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and come into the land which I shall show thee. Go ahead. Then came he out of the land of the Chaldeans and dwelt in Sharan. And from thence, when his father was dead, he removed him into this land wherein ye now dwell. Now he let these people know, I know where we came from. Mm -hmm. Because I call on the name of Jesus, that don't mean I'm dumb. You the one that don't know what went down. That's right. So go ahead. He ran it all by him. Go ahead and read. Five. And he gave him none inheritance in it. No. Not so much as to set his foot on. Uh -huh. Yet he promised that he would give it to him for a possession. Go ahead. And to his seed after him when as yet he had no child. He says, now he promised him that before he had one child. He let them know that the Lord made this promise to Abraham. Yes. I know that. I know what the Lord promised Abraham. That's right. I know that we are eventually going to have to go back to the land of Israel. That's right. But what I know that they don't know that they run off, I know what time to go. Yes. Yes, sir. It's all that simple. You jumped off in the pot and you didn't get bored. Yeah, because I didn't go while the water was in it and the fire was under it. That's right. I'll wait till it was sitting. <laughs> I'll wait till it's sitting on the chair. Yeah. Time it. Time and make the same move and exhale or make the same move and be destroyed. It is time and knowing when to do what. That's right. It's all that simple. Go ahead and read. What verse? Six. Uh-huh. And God spake on this wise, that his seed should sojourn in a strange land. Uh-huh. And that they should bring them into bondage and entreat them evil 400 years. Now, these brothers that fight with us, they're harming right now. See, the 400 years are up. Brothers... America wasn't the only one that enslaved us. No. The first enslaver we had before this second wave was the Egyptian, the one whose God you're trying to say. But then when the Lord sprung us from Egyptian, then the next slave we had was Assyria. Took out the nine tribes, you ain't heard them since. Right. And then the Babylonians come in, they enslaved us, passed us down to the Medo Persian, they passed us to the Greeks, the Greeks passed us to the Romans. Romans scattered us all over the Mediterranean, especially on the, on the African side. And America found you there. And the Hamites sold you to the Romans. Sure did. To the Americans. I know every foot of it. I know every foot. But the whole thing is, we crippling about 400 years. That happened in Egypt, sisters and brothers. Not here. Heard a Muslim talking, well, you know, 400 years. Yeah, man, I, said, I know where you got, what you, what you mean, you, I know where you got this from? You got it from me before I was educated. Hmm. Think about it, sisters and brothers. Because we're the priests, we're supposed to know this stuff. That's right. What verse are we? We have verse 7. Go ahead. And the nation to whom they shall be in bondage will I judge, said God. You notice he said that nation. He didn't say the whole world, that nation, one nation. Uh -huh. That nation was Israel, or was Egypt. Egypt had us in captivity for 430 years. Yes. Now we want to come out here and put the finger on the white man. I thank God that he put me among this Gentile. Mm -hmm. Because them Hamites and brought the wrath on you. Still bringing the wrath on you. Oh, yeah. If I got to be a slave, I, go, I choose this master every time. But don't nobody want to deal with that. And the nation and the nation to whom they shall be in bondage will I judge, said God. Go ahead and read. And after that shall they come forth and serve me in this place. And that's what they did. They went and served the Lord in Egypt. But Stephen is running this thing to him. Skip down to verse 17. Verse 17 and go ahead. 
But when the time of the promise drew nigh, uh -huh. which God had sworn to Abraham, the people grew and multiplied in Egypt. Uh -huh. Till another king arose which knew not Joseph. You see how that cosigned what he just said about the 400 years? Uh -huh. When the time of the promise came near, the people grew and multiplied in Egypt, not America. These brothers think that America is the only place that we was enslaved in. But you go into Deuteronomy the 28th chapter, it says all over the world. Over. How is it that you just cut America out? Well, I'm in my house, therefore it is the only house on the planet. Hmm. Think about it, sisters and brothers. Go ahead and read. 19. The same dealt subtly with our kindred, uh -huh. and evil entreated our fathers, so that they cast out their young children to the end they might not live. Look, they tried to destroy all the males. Yeah. The crocodiles of the Nile ate good. Go ahead and read. In the time in which time Moses was born and was exceeding fair and nourished up in his father's house three months. Now, if, if this is 400 years, now where Moses at? Right. I'm just pointing out some stuff, sister and brother. How you get caught up in a lie and you ride it. At that time, Moses was born. Skip down to verse 37 and go ahead. This is that Moses which said unto the children of Israel, uh -huh. A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren like unto me. Uh -huh. Him shall ye hear. That same Moses is the one that told you that Jesus was coming. Yes. First thing he had to be among the Israelites. First thing he had to be like Moses. When Moses died, all the males in his generation died. When Jesus died, all the males in Judea died. Mm -hmm. Same thing. In order to protect Moses, the Lord sent him in the house of Pharaoh. In order to protect Jesus, the Lord sent him into the country of Pharaoh. Mm -hmm. And when Pharaoh died, the angel told Moses, go on back to Egypt. All that seek your life is dead. And when Herod died, the angel told Joseph, take the child back to Judea because all that seeks his life is dead. Yeah. That ain't no accident. No. That's why when somebody asked me, jump up wrong, well, you know, uh, call himself the Messiah. I said, man, anybody else your age? <laughs> you know, the brother, well, what you talking about is because he can't be. He said, going to raise up a prophet from among your brethren, like unto me. He said, you better hear that prophet. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. What verse are we? We are 38. Go ahead. This, oh, yep. oh, go ahead. This is he that was in the church in the wilderness with the angel which spake to him in the Mount Sinai. Uh -huh. And with our fathers who received the lively oracles to give unto us. See, that's what a church was, sister and brother, in the wilderness. Israel is the church. It's the same Moses. Go ahead and read. To whom our fathers would not obey, uh -huh. but thrust him from them, and in their hearts turned back again into Egypt. And that's what he, Israel did. Yeah. They would not obey Moses. And while he was getting up in the mountain, getting the Ten Commandments, they made them golden calf and said, These be the gods, O Israel, that brought us out of Egypt. They wanted to go back. There is nothing different. Skip down to verse 51. Verse 51 and go ahead. Ye stiff-necked uh -huh. and uncircumcised in heart and ears. Go ahead. Ye do always resist the Holy Ghost. Uh -huh. As your fathers did, so do ye. You see, you just like your father. Stiff-necked. You always resist the word of God. Uh -huh. Go ahead and read. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? Israel killed all the prophets. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. And they have slain them which show before the coming of the just one. And everybody that's preaching about Jesus, they kill him too. Go ahead and read. Of whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers. Now y'all have murdered him. Go ahead. Now not the Romans. Not the Greeks. No. Not the Hamites. No. Israel. Yes. Go ahead and read. Who have received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it. And y'all have deceived the law by the by the by the uh, 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 spreading of angels. The angels is the one that's disposed of the law mm -hmm. for God, and you have not kept it. But still, you tell me that you are one that keeps the law. 
Remember now, this conversation he having with Israelites. You don't have one non-Israelite there among these groups that grabbed him. What verse was that? We have 54. Go ahead and read it. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart. Uh-huh. And they gnashed on him with their teeth. See, so that's what happened with Israel. They don't like what you're saying. They can't deal with you with the knowledge. Not here over there. <laughs> you're upset. Yep. You're upset. Want to hurt you too. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> I've experienced this in Washington Park. They run around and talk about, well, you know, the white man is the devil. The white man is the devil. I said, ask, ask me one question. I said, if I get a white man, it was a, a three-story building over there, and throw him off there on that concrete on his head, what would happen? Well, he'll, well, he'll die. I said, so how is it that you're going to get a white man going to fall all the way from heaven, hit the ground, and get up and dust himself out and put you in slavery? I said, y'all are the stupidest people I ever seen. I shouldn't have said the stupidest people. Then they start mumbling on me. God always have a ram in the bush. He had the brothers step in and get their get their get their uh, 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 attention while I went on down there and jumped in that old Chrysler and disappeared. I stayed away for two weeks so they give them time to cool off. But it's just stupid. You understand? So he said, you stiff neck, you're all the same way. You're just like your fathers. Skip down to verse 58. And look what they did. Verse 58. Go ahead. And cast him out of the city. They grabbed him and cast him out of the city. Go ahead. And stoned him. Uh-huh. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet whose name was Saul. Now, even the one that became Paul, he was dead. While they were stoning him to death, Paul was consenting to it. Yeah. Kill him. He even Paul, the apostle that became the apostle to the Gentiles. Yep. Go ahead and read. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Uh-huh. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. Uh-huh. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. Boy, that Stephen was a nice brother. Yes. I would have said, Lord, kill every one of them. <laughs> but he said, lay not this charge to them. See, I got to learn. See, I'm still trying to learn. But now, Paul, the one that became Paul, his name was Saul, sisters and brothers, because Paul was a Benjamite. And it was a custom of the people to name their children after some great person in their lineage or in the nation. So they named him Saul. But Gentiles like to always give you nicknames. So let's go into the 8th chapter of Acts. And let's see what happened to Saul now after they killed Stephen. Go ahead and read. And Saul was consenting unto his death. Uh -huh. And at that time, there was a great persecution against the church which was at Jerusalem. And they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria except the apostles. So now, Saul was saying, kill him, kill him. And then they was persecuting the church all over. Mm -hmm. And so Israel was scattered. Everybody was scattered but the twelve. Go ahead and read. And devout men carried Stephen to his burial uh -huh. and made great lamentation over him. Go ahead. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering into every house and hailing men and women committed them to prison. Uh -huh. Therefore, they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. So now, so when they, huh, Paul was destroying the church system, brother. I don't care if it was a woman, a man, he was having them put in prison. The Romans gave Israel that kind of autonomy. They could even put people in prison. So what happened? The people scattered all over. So when they scattered, let's see who they was talking to. Let's go into Acts the 11th chapter. Acts the 11th chapter. Because it is time for the world to know what's going on sisters and brothers so you can stop following Gentile teaching and all this Christian we have nowadays is Gentile teaching they don't have a clue of what's going on you're going to find some of this out today and then you go and then they have the argument going to try to argue with you I got ten dollars and you got two pennies I know where the wealth lies We're going to read one verse because they were scattered. Verse 19. 11, chapter of Acts, verse 19. 
Go ahead. Now they which were scattered abroad upon the persecution that arose about Stephen uh-huh. traveled as far as Phoenicia and Cyprus and Antioch. Go ahead. Preaching the word to none but unto the Jews only. Now these guys, they were scattered all over preaching, but nobody but Israelites. That's all. Nobody. Why was it that these guys were speaking only to Israelites? I'm going to show you that you ain't never read in your church. Let's go into Matthew, the 10th chapter. I'm going to show you why. Been in church all your life. You ain't never read this. You know why? Because your preacher, even though he looked like me, think he's a Gentile. <laughs> and that's what time it is. It will tell you I'm a Gentile. Boy, you, you haven't even read no Bible. Matthew chapter 10, Matthew chapter 10, verse 1, read it. And when he had called unto him his 12 disciples, Uh he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. So he, he, he armed them to take out of business he wanted. But look what he told them. Skip down to verse 5. Verse 5, read it. These twelve Jesus sent forth uh-huh. and commanded them, saying, Go ahead. Go not into the way of the Gentiles. Go not into the way of the Gentiles. Go ahead. And into any city of the Samaritans. Because they was Gentile too. That's why the Jews wouldn't talk to them. Go ahead and read. Enter ye not. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now how is the person that called himself a Christian and a Gentile want to preach this to his flock? Jesus said, go not to the uh, Gentile. Don't go to nobody but the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Is Jesus being biased? No, he's not being biased, sister and brother. No. His church was uninformed. How is this priest going to teach somebody and they dumb? That's right. Before you send the priest out, they got to be educated. Mm-hmm. Now, <clears throat> that's why, sisters and brother, the Lord had to prep Peter to send him to the Gentile. Because he made that statement before he left. But later on, after the church had grown and Israel had started to get some understanding, now it's time. But he had to prep Peter for it. Acts the 10th chapter. Acts chapter 10. That's why, sisters and brothers, I get, sometimes I get among, uh, I get among people that's arguing, especially among Gentiles trying to talk about, I don't even move my mouth. What am I going to say? Because whatever I say is going to be against him. And he don't even know it's against him. He don't, well, I'll take that back. He don't know it's for him. But it's against that bad teaching. Just like a young Gentile asked me, Merry Christmas. I said, I don't do Christmas. What religion are you? I don't do religion. And I don't. I do the law. Ten and one. Go ahead. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius. Uh Uh-huh. A centurion of the band called the Italian band. This is really weird. The first Gentile brought into the church under the new covenant was a Roman or an Italian, which made up the Roman Empire. This is what people don't understand. Rome started with Italy. Go ahead and read. A devout man and one that feared God with all his house, uh-huh. which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. Go ahead. He saw in a vision evidently about the ninth hour of the day an angel of God coming in to him and saying unto him, uh-huh. Cornelius. Uh-huh. And when he looked on him, he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thine arms are come up for a memorial before God. This man didn't know nothing about the God of Israel. But he knew that there was a God somewhere. Mm -hmm. And he believed that these was God's people. So he prayed always and he helped them. That's why I tell people all the time something come up, you know, I'm going to put something on the table, sisters and brothers. Like this thing you come Thanksgiving. Brother, oh, that's wrong. They might be serving the wrong God, but they might be serving him with the right heart. 
So what's going to happen? God going to send them what they need. Well, they ain't going there. Maybe you need to go there. Sit down and explain some book to them. What happens is we are quick to pass judgment. Well, I ain't serving this old God. How do you know? Maybe you ain't serving your God. This man didn't know nothing about the God of Israel. What I know, he didn't know nothing about the God of Israel. Keep reading. Go ahead and read. Five. And now send me into Joppa and call for one Simon, whose surname is Peter. Uh huh. He lodgeth with one Simon a tanner. Go ahead. Whose house is by the seaside. Uh huh. He shall tell thee what thou oughtest to do. Instead of condemning, send somebody there. Yeah. Let's sit down and talk about this thing. You understand what I'm saying? That's why people take issue with me. Well, brother, you know, you, this is, I said, what is wrong is what I can read out of this book. If I don't read it out the book, I don't care if you sit on the corner and do jump ups. If the book don't say you can't do jump up, jump up. But when the book tell you what you can't do, I got a problem with it. That's it. Because every time somebody tell me, well, you see, this is wrong. Tell me, tell me what's going on. Well, you know, you know, this is pagan. Is that right? Show it to me in the book. Brother going to show me, well, you know, this is Harvest Feast Thanksgiving. And I went in that same book. And you know what was written in among the Harvest Feast? The Feast of Tabernacles. So I guess this is pagan too, huh? In other words, sisters and brothers, the Lord, the book tell you not to be over-righteous. Because sometimes you're so righteous that you ain't good to nobody. So now he said, go and find one Peter. He will tell you what you ought to do. See, the Lord couldn't break the protocol. This angel, angel could have taught this man better than Peter could teach him. Yeah. But he couldn't do that. Why? Because the protocol. Skip down to verse 9. Verse 9 and go ahead. On the morrow, as they went on their journey and drew nigh to the city, uh -huh. Peter went up upon the housetop to pray about the sixth hour. Go ahead. And he became very hungry and would have eaten, but while they made ready, he fell into a trance. See, the Lord had to prepare Peter for this. He's the one that told Peter them not to deal with the Gentiles. Now, all of a sudden, you're going to send some Gentiles to him? Peter would have, no, he'd have stayed on the housetop. Mm -hmm. But no, the Lord, he went up, he got hungry, the Lord made him real hungry. So he went up on the housetop and he fell into a trance. Go ahead and read. Eleven. And saw heaven open, and a certain vessel descending unto him, as if it had been a great sheet knit at the four corners and let down to the earth. Uh huh. When were all manner of four footed beasts of the earth, and wild beasts, uh -huh. and creeping thing, and fowls of the air. Uh huh. And there came a voice to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. Now, you know what happened here, the Gentile telling you that this is the, the Lord is finna reverse the, the dietary law here. And you know what them Gentiles in the mind that looks like me? Follow suit. Right. You're supposed to be the head and you the tail. Right. And you following the tail. When the head follow the tail, that means somebody's going backwards. Ain't it? Yeah, right. ain't got nothing to do with the dietary law. We're going to show you this. Go ahead and read. 14. But Peter said, not so, Lord. For I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. Uh -huh. And the voice spake unto him again the second time. What God have cleansed, that call not thou uncommon. Now, they love to quote that to you. What God has cleansed, don't you call that common. But look, you got to keep reading. You can't stop there. Skip down to verse 19. Verse 19 and go ahead. While Peter thought on the vision, the Spirit said unto him, uh -huh. Behold, three men seek thee. Arise, therefore, and get thee down and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. That spirit was an angel, wasn't it? Yes, sir. Didn't the angel appear to uh, Cornelius? Mm -hmm. This is the same angel. Yeah. He went on down with well, Brother Boys, but they called him a spirit. What do you think angels are? Right. Go on down now, Peter. I don't want you to say nothing, doubt nothing, for I have sent there. Had that angel not told Peter, he wouldn't have went nowhere. Because Jesus last directed when he left, one of the last directed when he left the earth was what go not in the way of the Gentile. Mm -hmm. Peter wasn't going, uh, sisters and brothers. But being that the Lord had already got him ready for it, let's see what happens. Skip down to verse 23. 23 and go ahead. Then called he them in and lodged them. 
And on the morrow, Peter went away with them, and certain brethren from Joppa accompanied him. Uh -huh. And the morrow after they entered into Caesarea, and Cornelius waited for them and had called together his kinsmen and near friends. Uh -huh. Now, Cornelius had a house full of them now. Go ahead and read. And as Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. Uh -huh. But Peter took him up, saying, Stand up. I myself also am a man. Let me see why these Hebrews try this nowadays. You got some of the group that already declared them God. Now some Gentile fall out on his feet. He think, well, yes, where you belong. Give me up. Yeah. I know. But go ahead and read. What's the next verse? 27. Uh-huh. And as he talked with him, he went in and found many that were come together. Go ahead. And he said unto them, ye know how that is in that... It is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come unto one of another nation. Uh -huh. But God have showed me that I should not call any man common or unclean. So he wasn't talking about food, was he? It was an unlawful thing. Jesus set that law. I don't want you to go to nobody but the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But then Jesus is the one that reversed the law. He sent that angel, and that angel showed him, you got to go with it. Mm -hmm. And Peter still was wondering why he was there. Because he asked him, well, what you want? Go ahead and read a little more. 29. Therefore came I unto you without gainsaying, uh -huh. as soon as I was sent for. Uh -huh. I asked, therefore, for what intent ye have sent for me? <laughs> but I know you don't want to hear the word of God. He wanted to know why you, what you want with me. But then, basically, Cornelius told him how the angel had showed, and the angel sent him. And once Peter did that, then he, and once he told Peter that, then Peter taught him. Skip down to verse 34. And go ahead. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. That's the first time Peter understood. Ain't that something? Yeah. Not a church has grown, sisters and brothers. Had gotten big. And some of our Israelite brothers need to find that out too. That God is not a respectable person. That's right. Everybody on this planet came out of Adam and Eve. Mm -hmm. So why is he going to destroy all of them and save us? Come on, that, that defies reason, don't it? Yes, sir. Go ahead and read. 35. But in every nation, he that feareth him. How many nation? Every. Go ahead. And work of righteousness uh -huh. is accepted with him. Go ahead. The word which God sent to the children of Israel. Sent unto Rome. No. Which he sent unto the children of Israel, sisters and brothers. These points I need you to understand. Because if you understand that the Israelites is the one that possessed the word, then you know where to go to get it. That's right. Go ahead and read. Preaching peace by Jesus Christ. Uh -huh. He is Lord of all. Go ahead. That word I say ye know, which was published throughout all Judea, and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached. You notice he didn't say throughout Rome, did he? No. Now skip now. He got to deal with these people, and something happened that shocked them. Skip now to verse 44. Verse 44. And go ahead. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. The Lord let them angels mess with them now. Go ahead and read. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished, uh -huh. as many as came with Peter. Go ahead. Because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. Them guys sitting there with their mouth, what is going on? God, now the Lord made these guys talk. You understand? Because Peter there was the one that had to be educated now. So he had the Gentiles talking. And they said, now, what is going on? Oh, yeah. This ain't supposed to be. No. This is Israel's thing. And you got a lot of Israelites think the same way nowadays. So do. Go ahead and read. 46. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Uh -huh. Then answered Peter, can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized? See, these guys were speaking. And Peter and them understood it. That's why they heard him magnify God. How would you know somebody magnifying God if you can't understand the language that they're talking about? Yeah, sure. Peter and them knew every word they were saying. And then Peter had to ask his cohort. I know how it is. Man. <laughs> hey, look here, man. Can anybody deny water to baptize these people? Right. He had to ask that question. Go ahead and read. 
which have received the Holy Ghost as uh, well as we. Uh-huh. And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then prayed they him to tarry certain days. Now, Peter went out and he talked to these and all the Gentiles there. But Cheetah had to go back to Jerusalem. And let's see what happened when he went back. Let's go into the 11th chapter of Acts. 11th chapter of Acts. And verse 1. See, if you see, sister and brother, you read this stuff, and then when you hear people make stupid statements like, I think Luke was a Gentile, then you know it's a stupid statement, don't you? Read, I'm going to show you why it was a stupid statement saying Luke was a Gentile. Verse 1, go ahead. And the apostles and brethren that were in Judea. That heard... mean all the apostles, don't they? Yeah. The apostles and the brethren, which is in Judea, go ahead and read. Heard that the Gentiles had also received the word of God. See, this is this Holy Ghost that they poured out. The word, sisters and brothers. Mm -hmm. They heard also that the Gentiles had received the word of God. Go ahead and read. And when Peter was come up to Jerusalem, they that were of the circumcision contended with him. What does contend mean? They argued with Peter. Yeah. Man, you know, went down there. And, you know, I could hear some of them brothers right now. <laughs> you done lost your mind. Peter had to run that thing to him. Go ahead and read. Saying, Thou wentest in to men uncircumcised and didst eat with them. Uh -huh. But Peter rehearsed the matter from the beginning and expounded it by order unto them, saying. I mean, he rehearsed every word. Because Peter know Israel, he messed around and have bricks going upside his head. <laughs> I mean, he every word. But skip down to verse 12. We ain't got time to read all that. Verse 12, and go ahead. And the Spirit bade me with them. He said, look, and the Spirit bade me go to with them. go with them. He bade me. Go ahead. Doubting nothing. Go ahead. Nothing doubting. Moreover, these six brethren accompanied me. And we entered into the man's house. You know, Israel always like to have somebody that, that's going to get thrown on the bus with it. <laughs> look, at me, look at here, man. I bet them sick guy wasn't saying nothing. <laughs> Peter put the fang on him. Go ahead and read. And he showed us how he had seen an angel in his house, which stood and said unto him, uh -huh. Send me into Joppa and call for Simon, whose surname is Peter. Go ahead. Who shall tell thee... Who shall tell thee words whereby thou and all thy house shall be saved. See, that's what's going to save you, the word of God, sister and brother. Yes. Go ahead and read. And as I began to speak, the Holy Ghost fell on them as on us at the beginning. Now, the same thing that happened to us on the day of Pentecost happened to him. That's at the mm -hmm. beginning. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. Because it was an Israelite thing. Go ahead and read. 16. Then remembered I the word of the Lord, how that he said, John indeed baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Uh -huh. For as much then as God gave them the like gift as he did unto us who believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, what was I that I could withstand God? So look here, man. The Lord did this thing. What am I going to do? Am I going to argue with God? I'm going to deny him? I had to deal with it. Go ahead and read. When they heard these things, they held their peace uh -huh. and glorified God, saying, Then God also, then have God also to the Gentiles granted repentance unto life. Then that's when the rest of the apostles and the Jews that was with them understood that God wasn't a respecter of persons. Mm -hmm. But before that, they didn't understand that. No. And they didn't get involved. Go ahead. Now they which were scattered abroad upon the persecution that arose about Stephen. Now look, sisters and brothers, now this is going back to the time of Stephen. You understand? This is not something that happened after Cornelius. You know, like the Bible, people think the Bible is in order. No, you have to know what it is. Remember, when they stoned Stephen, they were scattered. Mm -hmm. But they said they was teaching to nobody but the Gentiles, but the Israel, but Jews. So we're going to go back. To when Stephen was stoned and when the church was persecuted and Paul was, was making havoc of the church. You need to understand this so you can understand what we're going to read. Go ahead and read. Traveled as far as Phoenicia and Cyprus and Antioch, preaching the word to none but unto the Jews only. Now we read that, didn't we? Go ahead and read. And some of them were men of Cyprus and Cyrene, which, when they were come to Antioch, Speaking to the Grecians, preaching the Lord Jesus. Well, they're speaking to the Gentile Grecians or the Israelite Grecians? The yeah, Israelite exactly. Grecians. Yeah. It already told you they ain't speaking to nobody but the Jews. I am an American. But 
my origin, I'm an Israelite. You understand what I'm saying? I ain't no African American. Go ahead and read. 21. And the hand of the Lord was with them, and a great number believed and turned unto the Lord. That's why they were scattered, preaching to nobody but Jews. Go ahead and read. Then tidings of these things came unto the ears of the church which was in Jerusalem. Uh -huh. And they sent forth Barnabas that he should go as far as Antioch. Now, Barnabas was, was sent with Paul. But the whole thing is, when the church found out what all these people had scattered and this great fruit that they had reaped in Antioch, the church would always send a representative down there and look at it. Same thing we do at the Israel of God. That's why we have so many camps. Brothers get down and the group get bigger and bigger and they want to deal with this. Then we reach out and we touch them. And if they really seriously want to do, we set up a camp. That's how that happened. Yes. I didn't learn this from him. It's just a natural thing among the Israelites. You understand what I'm saying? Because we know that we have to teach the planet. We have to teach the planet. God said it so. Oh, yeah. So now, so he sent Barnabas down there. But in the meantime, Paul had been converted. But when nobody trusted Paul. <laughs> you understand? Because they were scared of this cat. Even when the Lord blinded him and then took him and told his one Hebrew, lay your hand on it. He said, look here, man, do you know who this guy is? Mm -hmm. sure did. <laughs> but the only one that trusted Paul was Barnabas. So when they sent Barnabas, Let's not see what he did. Go ahead and read. 23. Who, when he came and had seen the grace of God, was glad uh -huh. and exhorted them all that with purpose of heart they would cleave unto the Lord. Go ahead. For well, he was a good man and full of the Holy Ghost and of faith. Uh -huh. And much people was added unto the Lord. Go ahead. Then departed Barnabas to Tarsus for to seek Saul. Uh -huh. And when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch. Now and he went and sought out Paul. Because he's the only one that trusted Paul. So he brought Paul out. Go ahead and read. And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. Uh -huh. And the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. So now when they first was called Christian sisters and brothers, there still was no strangers in the church. Mm -mm. It's all that simple. Because they did not know until the Lord sent Paul to him. Peter, I'm going to show you. He just taught Kinesis and that group. He went on about his business. He didn't go back no more. And I'm going to show you why I know he didn't go back. But then that was after this, sisters and brothers. Because they went preaching to nothing but Israel only. That's it. Israel only. So when the people was, when the word Christian come up, it was Israelite. Let me know these brothers don't know what they're talking about. Well, you old Christian, show sure, I'm a Christian. I'm better than that. I'm the original Christian. And I'm going to back down because you are uninformed. I ain't got nothing wrong with the name of Christ. You understand? Sure. Well, I ain't going to do with old Christ. But uh, I said, what? Well, you don't even know what Christ means. If you did, you wouldn't even call him Messiah either. Because they both mean the anointed one. You understand? I mean, I mean, you know, I want some water, and I don't speak Spanish. And you come down and say, well, you know, I, I want some water. Guys, say, aqua, no water. Aqua, no water. <laughs> so I get to die of thirst because I don't know what it's called in another language. <laughs> so still, sisters and brothers, so the, this thing did not start. With the Gentile. This was an Israelite thing. Then the Gentile were brought into it. And the apostle Paul was, that was apostle to the Gentile, he had not been sent. And even when he was sent, he didn't want to deal with the Gentile. Because no Israelite wanted to teach nobody but Israel. We all like to sit around one another and teach one another. Wait a minute. The whole nation is supposed to be free, so why do we need to teach one another? That's let me know that most of the brothers that said we chosen, they don't know what they was chosen for.
We would like to invite you to join us on the Sabbath Day Live via the Internet. Log on to our website, which is www.theisraelofgod.com. Click on the link Sabbath Day Live on our homepage. You will need Windows Media Player to view our program. We stream live twice every Sabbath at 10 a.m. and 1.30 p.m. Central Time. If you enjoy our program, we would appreciate your donations to help defer the cost of continuing this work. Send donations to The Israel of God, 2515 East 75th Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60649. Also, if you're in the Chicago area, please feel free to join us at our study class located at 2515 East 75th Street here in Chicago.